In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Seven, eight, nine, ten. This podcast goes to eleven. And a welcome to In the Trenches, everybody. Thanks for coming on to another episode. If you are watching this on YouTube, you see something almost too professional. We are trying <laughs> something today that is pretty much a step up from what the previous versions of In the Trenches have had. So I uh, would like to thank the people at StreamYard for uh making this tech and I am sort of working through it and discovering the ins and outs and all the good things about this tech with live streaming and StreamYard. But it's In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy and I am not alone. Today's guest is Mr. Johan Becker, a magical mystery man from Sweden that maybe you have not heard as a household name just yet, but like In the Trenches and all guests on In the Trenches, you will know a lot about him by the end of this episode. Welcome to the show, Johan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What a blast. <laughs> you, are my, uh, you are my guinea pig on this uh, venture. Yeah. It's, it, it looks pretty professional, the studio, huh? We can, if we really want to, we could, uh, we could go uh, three different can yeah, angle yeah. views and all this kind of stuff. That's cool. So first off, we should probably talk about how we know each other. And the reason why we know each other is, um, hey... That didn't work out good. There you go. I added you there. Um, I know about you for now, what, over 10 years? Yeah, Yo it must be over, almost 15 years, I would wow. say. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Time flies. So we met originally, not just because you're one of the better <laughs> Swedish speaking, or English speaking Swedes that I know. I mean, mm -hmm. at this point, every Swede speaks really good English, yeah. but not to the point of like, I would say you or... Uh, Anton Schorberg kind yeah, of yeah, takes the, yeah, the yeah. Uh, prize on well, that. Well, I, I lived in the States for a year when I was 17. Okay. Uh, did an exchange student year in, in Northfield, Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the home of the Swedes anyway? Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, Prince uh, was like the big thing. The music scene was, of was course. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, in Minneapolis. We know each other through music. Yeah. Uh, for those of you... And through through kids, yeah, yeah, our kids Going, as well are around yeah. the same age. Yeah, we ran it, started to run into each other when we were dropping off our kids and at, stuff. At the, yeah. at the like the little school, the doggy exactly. school. Yeah, and uh, what happened with musically how we sort of met is that well, eventually you ended up singing a, a lot on my uh, on my solo album. Yeah, yeah. He's got one of the best sounding voices, I think. It, it, it for me it's a dream voice because it's the voice that I always wanted as as growing up. It's got that high, just <laughs> perfect pitch, but high range. And this is why I say makes you uh, the mystery man that you are. You are like a uh, high range alto, high tenor, I guess would be voice. Yeah, maybe. But you know, down inside, deep down inside, there's this growling, aggressive, <laughs> uh, dark angry like raw voice that you have put in together with a band called uh, bucket of phosphor that you've yeah sort yeah. of masterminded yeah yeah exactly trapped in the body of a pop star though <laughs> totally totally yeah no i think it's it's uh, it's uh, you have to explore your all, all your sides yeah uh, would at you some point would you say your range go like how did you know when you were growing up like hey this is going to be my thing. It's not just guitar playing. I, vocals is where... Yeah, probably uh, I was around 19 because I wanted to become a professional drummer. So I was really good at, you know, that was my main instrument. Uh, you started with drums. Yeah, yeah. What when I was like then? six, seven. And, you know, I was really aiming at, you know, playing the rock clubs with the metal bands and hard rock bands in the in the 80s and 90s. But I don't know. I got, I got so much... Uh, so much attention for my singing that, you know, I just, that's, that's what I chose to do. That's cool. Yeah. I still play the drums though. I, I have this kid back at home and I'm driving my wife crazy. <laughs> well, you also turned me on to a, a baritone guitar because we've written some songs together yeah, as yeah. well. Uh -huh. And uh, the baritone, you had a baritone Gibson Les Paul. Yeah, I yeah exactly. And you still use that for a Oh, yeah, recording. Totally. Don't all you all the metal stuff, but now I'm starting to go back more into the traditional, you know, five string normal tuning. 
five string. No, six string. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, that's not traditional at all, man. Uh, no. Um, no. What am I well, talking about? Where, 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 I mean, because you have this spectrum of musical influences, I would say it's somewhere, it lies somewhere between the Beatles and some unnamed dark metal thrash yeah, band. Yeah, from, from Beatles to Slipknot and beyond. Yeah. <laughs> I take it the 80s and, and 60s. I mean, those are the two foundations of, of pop. Uh, so, you know, I've, of course, I know all the 80s hit songs and, and uh, all the 60s. So it's a, you, you're kind of a mix of everything you've ever listened to. Right. And then you, you know. What got you into the heavier stuff? Oh, I've always been. Uh, I mean, I started out listening to Queen, and then it was, of course, Deep Purple, uh, Rainbow, Black Sabbath, and you know, just follow the Dio and and Iron Maiden, and, and you know, all these thrash bands in uh, coming in like Anthrax and Megadeth and Metallica. So I know uh, I've listened to them all. Yeah. So I really know, you know, it's. Uh, what I like is that, I mean, because I want the listeners to hear a bit of the dichotomy. So I'd, yeah, like yeah. To, I'd like to maybe start with some of the easier pop stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then go on to, uh, and then hit them with a little bit of uh, Bucket, <laughs> bucket of, of Phosphor. Phosphor yeah. Because now, even currently, you're singing with a uh, sort of a Swedish, uh, I don't know if they're pop, or they're, they're just icons in Russia. Yeah. And it's well, a they, band they were called huge the Secret in, Service. They're still kind of big. I mean, they were huge. It's kind of a new new wave type of pop band. But when it, you know, and they started out in 1979. I'm, of course, not the original singer, but but uh, it's called, the band is called Secret Service and mm. huge in Russia. And How they, they had this? number one hits all over Europe in, in, in the early 80s. And yeah. It's a it's a, a a band named after an American sort of you know institution. Yeah, but it's formed in Sweden, but vastly popular in Russia. Yeah, yeah, Russia. I get and, it. And all all the former Eastern kind of Eastern uh, countries that used to be under the Soviet Union. So right. But not only that, it's France, Germany, and but but we we mainly do our gigs in in Russia actually, and that's been crazy fun. All right. Yeah. Well, to to show a little bit of that dichotomy, do you think we should maybe uh, yeah show a little bit of that live play a little live bit of thing the news because this is the newest stuff that you're doing that you're currently doing, and it has definitely a pop yeah, edge but, to it. But this is an old song though. I'm okay. I'm just a singer in this. All right. Obviously, a big rock show. Big yeah, Russian this, production. This is in the, the Olympic Stadium in, in in Moscow, and this was last year. Nice. But it's um, it's fun to do these type of shows. All right. So you're playing these venues about how many people? The, in this one, it was forty thousand people. So, but we were not the only band. This was like a big. Uh, type of 80s celebration but it was definitely the biggest audience I've ever performed in front of so that is a little taste of what you're doing exactly right now which you could has some pop overtones obviously oh, yeah. not not as pop to, not as a uh, pop as I remember when I first met you because mm-hmm. it was yeah then, then I was into more kind of a Beatles type of thing with together with my my Carl Martindale, Carl Martindale, who, uh, who the Wall actually, Stones. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Wall Stones. And and I actually met Carl first, Calais, and we've done some videos. If you guys go down through the trenches of uh, my YouTube official channel, which uh, if you need to go check out the YouTube official channel, I will check it out. You can check it out right there. Um, that is a very Beatley influence yeah, yeah. Uh, thing that you were doing. With the Wall Stones. Stones, yeah. Stone Cake, that was not the song? Uh, good old Stone yeah. Cake. And some, there's some really good songs on that album. And then you went on to do this thing called Melody Festival, which not a lot of Americans know about. A lot of Europeans know. It's Euro, part of the Eurovision Song Contest. Mm-hmm. You've been in Eurovision Song Contest here in Sweden how many times? Three times. Uh, once more as a sidekick, but I wrote the song. Uh, this was in 2004 and 2005 with the, the Wall Stones and 
2009 uh, Star Pilots, this uh, uh, <laughs> Top Gun spin-off uh, type of track, you know, that became that quite big. That one is one of those songs where I can almost, I can almost feel the influence, like, you know, you're, you're in... It's, you're, well, for one, the name is Star Pilots. Yeah. For two, this, the, you're dressed in a some sort White of military. Pilot suit. Yeah, yeah. Wait, did you use that pilot suit for uh, Secret Service? Yeah, is yeah, that... I do. I still I recycle <laughs> it. It's uh, it has become like a thing now. Where, oh, it's that guy with that. It's pilot your trademark. Suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. It's your Captain Stubing trademark, man. Yeah, you gotta have something. <laughs> well, I want to show a touch of that before I get to the yeah. real heavy stuff. This so. was I don't know how, how many years ago. 12, 13, 2009. Yeah. All right. So, let's, let's check it out. Did you do the choreography? <laughs> of course. <laughs> There's that jacket. Blood. Ice man. <laughs> That survivor <laughs> melody line. Come I don't on, know. I don't know. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> no, I feel it's a little bit of a rocky vibe too. Yeah, it's yeah, little Kenny Loggins in there. You got, you know. Yeah, exactly. We wanted to do a song that could have been off the Top Gun soundtrack. You know. What people don't realize about Melody Festival is that the biggest thing in the street oh, yeah, thing yeah. is you need this to time put of year. You need to put on a good show to to get remembered. <laughs> Poetic. <laughs> hey man. Yeah, yeah. Not as not as crazy as some of the lyrics you have for uh Bucket of Foster, oh, which we're gonna get into in a yeah. second. So there you go. Yeah. That yeah. was Star Pilots. That was Star Pilots. <laughs> <laughs> I still play that song on on the radio here. It's uh That's good. Know, it's man. it's you... been ten years. So. But the first song uh, in the heat of the night was a big hit in the UK. This is what I think qualifies you for being more in the trenches than most is because you are doing whatever it takes to survive. Yeah, yeah. Don't but borrow I mean, that I mean, as I, one I of love, my lyrics. I, I love music, so I mean, I love to do pop and I love to do hard rock and metal. I, I, I write for a lot of, together with a lot of hard rock bands, Eclipse and Heat and, and uh, you know, Jeff Scott Soto's Wet and all these. Uh, nice, man. So I'm, I'm really into the melodic thing, but I also have this weak... I mean, I really like aggressive uh, riffing and, 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 you know, bands that show total aggression. You know, it makes me feel good inside and happy. It's almost like this, you have this thing on YouTube now where like people are whispering and doing this thing and, and yes. they get a certain following like because they feel something. Right. I don't feel anything when I listen to that. But <laughs> if I hear like a great riff... You know that that gets me going. Yeah. You know? I'm not I'm not allowed to talk bad about Billie Eilish. My daughter will kill me. So oh. yeah, <laughs> no, but great. I get what you're saying. I yeah, get yeah. what you're saying. You know, there, there uh, are, there's always been that a great riff as something physically happens in my body, and I, it's just great, and I I love it. Yeah, yeah. I kind of wanted to get into with the heavier stuff. Mm -hmm. Set set the audience up with the pop stuff, and then say this is what you're doing now. And this is this is a band that you masterminded called Bucket of Phosphor, I would say you've combined all the pop elements of it uh, within the songs, with the melodies, because you do some growling, but then you sing really melodic stuff over yeah, it. Yeah, I think you have to have a little bit of both, because if you just do the growl stuff, it, it will get too boring. So, yeah, this, uh, it, this is me and, and, and a fantastic guitar player called Christian Nyman from, from Finland, and I think he's one of the best metal guitarists of all time. He's amazing. Well, they're going and to. And I just now. thought, you know, we have to do something with this guy. And, and it happened so that my father was dying of, of bone cancer. And, oh, and so this was, a, this was a really like big outlet for mm. me to. I felt good after screaming it all out, and it's yeah. it's, it's supposed to be music is it's supposed this this is supposed to be outrageous, you know. It's uh, everything is over the top, so so we had a lot of fun with it, with uh, you know trying to be as aggressive as we possibly could. I'd like to play a little bit of it yeah. for the audience, and uh, and we, we got Morgan Ogren on drums, this master drummer who who um, played with Frank Zappa. Nice. 
Let's hype them all up, man. Yeah. All these guys sound like they're in the trenches as well. So um, let's listen to a little bit of Bucket of Phosphor. <laughs> song is the riff the riff yeah I, I'm, there you are what i'm hearing myself it's it's like it's uh, it's it's crazy but i think it's this is the whole album i feel is it's kind of this small masterpiece that no one's ever heard you know so check it out if you if you like this kind of stuff or you know recommend it to to other people because it's, no it's doubt, crazy man because i think a lot of the people listening right now they said well roxy's had a couple different guests on because they've been playing a, a different a bunch of different types of music yeah, yeah. And it's like no I've had one guy on. His name's Johan Becker. Yeah. He's a international man of mystery, at least here in Sweden. He's one of my buds that uh, we actually do hang a lot out a lot here in uh, Stockholm. We go out for coffee. Yeah, yeah. We talk not, about, not only coffee. We, yeah, well, we're going to go out for maybe a few more uh, things that might be a little bit stronger than coffee after this podcast is done. But I do thank you for being part of my uh, big test here with the... Um, new system with the yeah, new stream well, yard system it, it sounds pretty good it's if you fun. want to so che- fun. check out more uh, episodes that are on in the trenches you can go to ryanroxy.com a slash podcast but um, no we're gonna now we've caught up with you musically a little bit now yeah. it's time just to get into just regular yeah yeah yeah, yeah sure. regular stuff yeah regular dude yeah, stuff yeah. that we talk about because you know it's 2020 already and here we are we both have uh kids that are teenagers Mm -hmm. and uh we both have um this sort of desire need uh longing for to entertain and to stay you know to keep playing music i always i always say that i'm very lucky to still be doing what i'm doing what's driving you to keep playing music and making music your focus you know, I basically quit everything until, uh, like my my live performance stuff. Uh, I've just done some small things until I got the phone call. Hey, you want to be the new lead singer in, in Secret Service? And I thought, my God, this this sounds like a, a, a crazy great opportunity to see the East, and it's been fantastic. You know, exciting. I just came back from Kamchatka, Russia. <laughs> you were telling it's me about the, the edge place. of the world. We you can't to- go any further. We tried to look for it on Google Maps, and I was like, uh, "Okay, what? It's what barely you there." You go to Siberia, and yet, and you, then you go even more it's, east. It's even east of, of Japan, this small peninsula that goes out. So right across, it's like Alaska, and and we were right on that edge, and it felt like we were at the edge of the world. Super beautiful, and and this lost wilderness, last wilderness with volcanoes, and so that was crazy. But we do a lot of Moscow gigs, and. 
We're gonna do Denmark and Germany. It uh, sounds like too, a really so. good like sort of touring option for you to, to be a part of. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. And I did, and it, look, I didn't write these songs. Somebody else did that, and they did a good job. So they are classic songs that we are performing in in in. Hey, which is. Uh, I get to do that every so, single yeah, night yeah, on exactly. stage with Alice. I get to play twenty different lineups I know. of you know forty years of music yeah. from different lineups and bands of classic songs, yeah. and that's really a thrill yeah, for it's, me it's, too. It's amazing, yeah. yeah. I feel really thankful and blessed to be able to do that. Cool. What What's your uh, regiment? I mean, because a lot of people do sort of send me messages and after they've listened to a podcast they go well you didn't really talk about the practice habits that you know with mm-hmm. some of these guys and everybody has a different approach yeah. and how not just with guitar playing not but, just yeah. with your drumming but yeah. with your voice what are some of I your I practice a lot actually because when I do 22 of these songs and they're really high pitched it's um, it's like you have to really be able to do to set all these sing all these tones so I, I sing a lot you know, before like uh, I know we're gonna have a show. Maybe I, I sing every day for like two hours uh, for a week. Nice. Yes, yeah, so I really I don't want to lose my voice. Is there a warm up or a warm down? Yeah, warm up a little bit, not too much. Just the usual, uh, you know, and go up and then start stretching a little bit, and then I start singing maybe like a song that's not crazy high, the first one, but but you know slowly warm up, but it's yeah. really get it into your muscle memory. Do you have a song that is a good go-to song, like a cover song that you can always rely? I, I think I know which one it is, but dude, but <laughs> you know, you know which one it is. I did a cover of uh, "She's So High." Tal Bachman? Yeah, I'll oh, get out of here, it's, man. It's, it's it's out on the uh, on Spotify, and it's a really good version. And that cracked me up because I didn't know that you played guitar on, on that original, until on, yeah. on the original until later. So the that's, original version and the Peloton commercial yeah. version. <laughs> See, I, I did that. I did that cover uh, when I won this um, Fame Fame Factory uh, TV show back. You know, yeah, that was in two thousand and four. Yeah, that was the beginning of the Wallstones. That yeah, right? that was the yeah. beginning of the Wallstones. So, but and I did you, this, uh, and my voice was so much. Uh, I didn't have all the semi tones that I have now. But it's a it's a really good version of it. That's funny, yeah. hey, dude. She's so high, top. Of, well, you know what? If I squint a little bit, you know, and I see that right now, I can see a little bit of Tal Bachman in you. You know, <laughs> you, you know, it's, 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 he's well, Canadian. you know him. I don't. No, no, no. Yeah. He, he's um, it's been years since I've seen him, but I just did see his father, uh, Randy Bachman okay, from yeah, Bachman cool. Turner yeah, Overdrive. Yeah. He was at our show at the. Uh, in, in London just mm-hmm. recently. Is he still doing gigs? He's doing gigs, man. Yeah, yeah. He's out there. I mean, just like all of us, he's in the trenches, man. Yeah, that's great. He's just putting out there. And actually, Tao plays in his band right now. Okay. I yeah. bet he does. She's so high then. <laughs> I, he I should. would imagine. Yeah. I would imagine. But that wasn't the song I was thinking. I was thinking our go-to song that I always call you up when I'm doing some sort of acoustic gig is uh, Rainbow in the Dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. you, you have that unique ability to get that high Ronnie James Dio yeah, sort of, yeah. you know, yeah. there's just, there's some, there's just a power in his voice. Yeah, I know. I listened to a lot of, I started even listening to Elf back, back in the days where he's doing a really good vocal. The band before. Yeah. 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 Elf and all the rainbow and Black Sabbath. I think still think Black Sabbath was best with Ronnie James Dio. There you go. Yeah. He's, but he's probably my number one, hero actually i was just gonna say, i was gonna hero. move into that saying is there what other singers are you looking up to so obviously ronnie james dio being ronnie one of james dio i've looked up to lou graham <laughs> yeah of nice. course yeah lou well graham. you know i i had just interviewed on a former podcast if you guys want to check it out is mike michael sterto who played in a lou graham solo band yeah oh, he's so so amazing can, yeah i love it i'm gonna check it out there you go check out more podcasts yeah. it's all no, of course i'm listening to you know, of course, Michael Jackson and Prince, but uh, I would say like the the people that I could relate my voice to the most have have been kind of Lou Graham and and Jolyn Turner and 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 these nice. guys who has this kind of high pitched voice. Yeah, Jolyn is one of those great, very singer. very unique, like eccentric dudes. Yeah, sweet as hell. Yeah, he believes totally in the alien. 
Oh, okay. So, okay. I'm, I'm not there yet, but. Well, you, you, I did. <laughs> hey, the other day I did see you stockpiling groceries. Oh, I did. Yeah. I did. What, 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 <laughs> I, I, check it out, folks. I, uh, I go by, you know, just to pick up. Every single night, you, we, you did not take a picture, did you? I actually did take a picture, <laughs> and, I, and I sent it, and I texted it yeah. to Bianca. No, but but the thing is, obviously, it's it's not. You know, we're still kind of in this beginning phases of, you know, the zombie pan, z- zombie pan, uh, pandemic apocalypse. hell, yeah. yeah, with the corona shit, and and so I went to the store every single night. We shop for whatever we're going to eat that night, right? <laughs> B makes some sort of amazing meal yeah, yeah. for us. And, and the thing is, I do it night by night. And I look over to my left as I'm in the store with my one or two things. And I see <laughs> Johan Becker there with a huge with a huge grocery thing, a grocery cart, like stockpiled. Yeah, you totally. stockpiled. Like you got the, and, and then you made a comment like there's no more. I was looking at you like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? And you just got like, get like a... Some uh, coffee or something when you shouldn't be stockpiling, man. And there's like cans on the bottom. You did yeah. it really well. There was all cans on the bottom. Rice. So you did the lighter stuff yeah. on the on the top. But you said you did something about that. Uh, there's no more toilet paper in, in Japan. And there's <laughs> yeah, in Hong Kong, it's yeah. all out. Yeah, they're all out. All so, right, so I don't know. I just thought it would be good to have like at least a two a two week stockpiling yeah. in case you get. And sick. what did I tell you? I said I said you know what? I'm going to be that guy that. If I really need something to eat when the zombie apocalypse does hit, I'll just make just my way down to yeah, your yeah, place. Sure, sure. <laughs> Come on a in. Box away. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to go out with one more sort of uh, a detour of a song because it just to show the whole spectrum of what Johan mm-hmm. Becker is about. Um, it was a project that you did with a keyboard player. Yeah, he's 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 getting really, you know, he's he's out there has over 20 30 million views on his youtube channel his his name is cable k a b u he's, he's finnish right yeah yeah he's finnish so, so you're a little yeah, bit yeah yeah i was I'm, i was born in finland but i'm a swedish speaking finn so right. but i've been, i've been in sweden for 20 years now but but he's he, he's doing this uh, analog uh, synthesizer stuff uh, like you know jean michael jarre and, and and all these things. and he had so a show here how did you get involved with this well he he sent me his album before he released it, and we, we you know we, we we talk a lot about you know my career and his career, and 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 I heard this track called "Just Another Space Odyssey." It was an instrumental track, and I had just watched uh, "Gravity" with Sandra Bullock. Yeah, 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 yeah. that movie. So I got so inspired. So so I wrote a top line to the track that he did, and uh, and I just performed it once, but it's 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 creating quite a. A stir. Yeah, it, it's it a has. great performance of it. That's why yeah, I, want, see, I wanted only, to play. I only did it once, and it's live. And I, I, there are some really high tones that I'm hitting there, and and it just has this vibe to it that connects with people. This melancholic, melancholic stuff, you know. Well, let's listen to a little bit of it while you're sitting with me. Um, if it goes on for too long before it gets to the high part, I'll yeah, cut yeah. it, yeah, and, yeah, sure. and then I'll I'll leave our audience to go and uh, search the rabbit hole for Johan Becker. I put your Instagram up a couple times, but uh, all you have to do is go on to YouTube and um, search for Johan Becker and Kabu. Kabu. So here it is. Yeah. So that's that's also a little bit diversity. So some of those so so some of those projects helped fund <clears throat> the bucket of phosphor. Yeah, totally. The bucket of phosphor <laughs> thing was a really cheap album to make, I would say. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I, well, I I produced it together with 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 Christian and 
But you so, put your heart into it. You put your soul into it. I put my it, heart you know? and soul into it when I was in a dark place. Uh, yeah. But the outcome was, was really good. It's almost therapeutic. Power of music yeah. no matter what. Hey, you know what? I put myself on there. There you are again. So I want to thank you for coming on In the Trenches uh, podcast well, thank you. with me. Thank you for having me. For all of you guys that are uh, curious, more curious about Johan Becker, I will put on the YouTube and the Instagram um, link right there. It's at Becker71, B-E-K-K-E-R-7-1. And um, if you are not following Johan, please do so now. And if you're not following me, it's at Ryan Roxy. So I do not have an In the Trenches Instagram account yet, but at Ryan Roxy should suffice right now. I will put um, the ticker on as well. As we roll on out of here, any parting words that you'd like to say to your newfound uh, friends and fans out there? Well, I mean, it's it's been a, a joy to sit here with you and, and talk talk to you. So it's been it's, good, uh, hopefully man. you'll find it's somehow interesting. I don't know. No, very interesting. <laughs> and, and you know what? We have sort of embraced the new technology of StreamYard, and we shall see what happens when I go and put this down to uh, edit it and... Uh, see what the final result is but for those about you there listening it already was edited hopefully it sounded good and uh, catch you next time make sure you follow and support in the trenches with ryan roxy until next time enjoy the ride thank you johan thank you thank you in the trenches with ryan roxy